It was a dark and stormy night on the Pacific Ocean island of Pompeii, April 1907. Palm trees swept the ground as rain and lightning poured from above. German Governor Victor Berg tossed and turned in his medical tent, wailing in delirium, whispering about the sounds of conch shells blowing in his ears. His personal physician frantically tried everything he could, but nothing was working. He turned to the locals who stood nearby and asked them just what had happened. They told him it was vengeance from the gods. It had not been long since the Germans had taken control of the island and barely had they made themselves comfortable. Still, Governor Victor Berg scoffed at the ignorance of the local king's proclamation. To disrupt the holy ground that once belonged to past rulers with supernatural powers would be breaking the law. Of course, this meant nothing to the governor. The Germans had purchased Pompeii from the Spanish. They made the laws of this land. That day, he disregarded the king's warning and entered the strange and ancient ruins of non Madal to hunt for artifacts and treasure. At some point, he happened upon the entrance of a sealed tomb within those weaving corridors. An hour later, he stumbled back to the camp, pale and exhausted, to recruit his men for the excavation of the century. In that ancient sealed tomb, he had discovered the skeletal remains of giants three meters tall. Of course, he fell ill before they could leave, and the very next day, Governor Victor Berg died of unknown causes. The tomb that he spoke of was never found. Welcome friends to Truth or Lore. I'm Mr. Mythos and today we'll investigate the secrets and legends that surround the ancient and strange megalithic city of non Madal. Be sure to subscribe if you love investigating the mysteries of history like I do. Every sub is an incredible support for the videos I make on my channel. Without further ado, let's dive right in to one of today's greatest archaeological enigmas. Objectively, non Madal is an odd city. Built in a large lagoon atop a coral reef, non Madal has the appearance of floating on the water. It's made up of over 100 small artificial islands, each constructed log cabin style using giant basalt logs. The median weight of each log is 5 tons, with the heaviest weighing nearly 50 tons. For perspective, an African bush elephant, the largest species of elephant, only weighs up to 11 tons. Now, on top of the incredible weight of these logs, the walls of each island reached as high as 50 feet and up to 17 feet thick. So lies the most blatant mystery of non Madal. How in the world was this place built? I mentioned that non Madal was odd. It's more than just how it was built though. We should start by asking why. The location of non Madal is vacant of fresh food or drinkable water. There's no dirt to grow crops and the ocean around it leaves it exposed to the elements. Food and water for the entire city had to be taxied in by boat. To belabor this fact, after the original rulers of non Madal were overthrown and the city was abandoned for the first time, the next occupants, not long after moving in, deserted the site completely due to the difficulty in achieving means of survival. It just seems like an impractical and strange choice to build non Madal where it is, especially for an estimated population of over 1,000 people. The secrets of non Madal may be harder to crack than you may imagine, and this is for three reasons. One, the island's history has been passed down strictly via oral tradition, without the use of written records. Two, there is a practice of historical and cultural secrecy that makes it difficult for outsiders to gain access to local knowledge. This is largely due to fear of supernatural repercussions. Only recently have the natives opened up, and this leaves generations of knowledge up for debate. 3. Even the natives of Pompeii aren't 100% sure who lived there before them. And we'll begin with this point. 
Pompeian tradition tells that the builders of Nonmadal had migrated from the nearby megalithic city of Lelo. Inspired by Lelo's megalithic stone architecture, they wanted to build something even more impressive and complex. The issue here is that modern radiocarbon dating disproves this oral history. Nonmadal predates Lelo by at least 100 years with its construction starting sometime in the 11th century. There is one thing that has remained consistent, the ancient Pompeian legend of how Nonmadal was built. Two twin sorcerers, Olisipa and Olosipa, arrived one day on a massive canoe hailing from some mythical land. Pompeian legend asserts that these two were quite foreign in appearance as well as much taller than the native Pompeians. Upon greeting the native people, the twins asked if they could build an altar in the lagoon to worship the god of agriculture. After gaining approval, the twin sorcerers levitated the massive basalt logs and made them fly through the air like birds and into their place. Legends describe the strange sounds and pitches associated with the levitation. There is even mention of a glowing flying dragon at the scene. Now, I'm not saying it was aliens, but just kidding. Still, the method of how these stones were moved and placed still stumps archaeologists and researchers. Attempts to recreate the process in the mid-90s failed miserably, with any log weighing over one ton sinking during transport. Again, the heaviest stone in Nonmadal weighs over 100,000 pounds or 50 tons and this is from verified scientific sources. Such incredible weight would easily crush any wooden log rolling system, raft or rope. Today, the artificial islands, buildings and canals that remain are still incredibly stable and safe to tour, which is a testament to the sophistication and superiority of this ancient megalithic city. So it could have been aliens, mm, perhaps. And if you take the native's perspective, it was magic. Here on Truth or Lore, we don't shy away from entertaining fringe theories as long as they have some meat to them. So we need to discuss the possibility of giants, as mentioned in the legend of German governor Victor Berg. Let's begin with the reference made clear in the original myth of the builders of Nonmadal. The twin sorcerers that arrived from an unknown land were described as being significantly taller than the natives at the time. One brother eventually died of old age and the surviving brother declared himself king. He bred with a local woman, his offspring eventually becoming the next in Nonmadal's royal lineage. From then on, as oral tradition on the island states, all 12 generations of chief rulers like their twin progenitors were exceptionally tall. Moving on from the legend, the largest structure in the city is, in fact, the Tomb of the First King. This tomb, at 262 by 196 feet, is the size of a football field. It's more than 26 feet tall. Inside is a maze that eventually leads to a large crypt that scientists have carbon dated but left undisturbed. There are many other large, unopened tombs sometimes in hidden locations throughout the city. In the greater perspective of things, there are countless old myths of giants throughout the Pacific Islands. Well-known stories of giants are commonplace in cultures not far from Nonmadal. The Solomon, Samoan, and even Hawaiian Islands come to mind. In the island of Pompeii, there are old but less popular legends of three distinct races of giants. Humanoid flying giants, underwater monkey giants, and a race of worker drone giants that labor beneath the sea. These old myths are less popular on the island probably because they don't fit into the more accepted narrative of the twin sorcerers. Take from that what you will. I must stress that Governor Victor Berg did indeed exist. Not only that, but records show that he died on that date in April 1907 in the way that the legend describes. He violated the local law and explored the ruins. That day he came back and collapsed, 
delirious through the night and suffering an unknown cause of death the following morning. Now, modern conventional experts theorize that he probably died of sunstroke and heat exhaustion from that long hard day of exploring those uncharted ruins, but the Pompeians, ever since that day, suggest differently. Whether he opened a tomb that housed the skeleton of a giant is besides the fact. He violated and grossly disrespected the sacred resting place of the kings. The natives reported a thick air of spiritual activity that night. They were certain that the governor had been cursed. Even the locals would avoid going to non Madal, believing that dangerous supernatural powers guarded it, particularly after dark. This superstition of non Madal being haunted is old and long standing. There are many stories of visitors after dark being killed by some mysterious power. There are tales of ghoulish lights that appear, and moans that echo from long sealed crypts. Even today, there are only a handful of local guides that offer short tours of the site, and never after nightfall. Whether Victor Berg was cursed and killed by vengeful spirits may never be known. Similarly, much of the true history of non Madal may be lost to time. Cursed lands have a tendency to keep their secrets. In 1874, a ship containing countless crates of non Madal artifacts was set off by Polish anthropologist Jan Kubery to make its way to the Zoological Society of London. It didn't make it far. The ship sunk near the Marshall Islands and centuries of Pompeii history were lost to the dark waves of the Pacific Ocean. What conclusions can we draw with what little sources we have available? It's the eighth wonder of the world. The impressiveness of non Madal's engineering and architecture easily rivals that of the Giza pyramids when considering the resources available. When conventional theories hold as little weight as fringe ideas, you start to wonder what exactly makes more sense. Do any of the many myths and legends of non Madal bring us any closer to the truth? Advanced engineering, black magic sorcery, just how many secrets are lost to the ancients? Thank you so much for watching. If you are fascinated by the strange megalithic city of non Madal and want more myths and mysteries to explore, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. As always friends, stay tuned for the next episode of Truth or Lore.